Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. A few days back on July 8th at 11.15 UTC, it was said that 99% of Earth's population could see sunlight at the same time and that this event actually happens each year on July 8th at exactly 11.15. Now some people have taken this to meaning that the Earth can't be a globe like our old friend Level Earth Observer, who subsequently published this video called The Impossible Globe Earth. Tomorrow is one of those days that is just that, impossible if the Earth was a globe, based on the fact that 99% of the people on Earth see sunlight at the same time. You can see Russia, all across Russia, all across Europe, all across to North and South America, are pretty much in daylight. Pay particular attention to the side profiles showing the sunlight, remembering that only half the globe Earth faces the sun at any given point in time. So it would be impossible for that much sunlight if the Earth was a ball. Don't take my word for it. Try and demonstrate this for yourself if you're a globe believer. Try and reproduce this amount of sunlight from one light source on your globe now, the animation of Earth being used here to suggest how much sunlight must be hitting the Earth is quite misleading with regards to the claim that 99% of people would see sunlight at the same time. Although, in Elio's defense, I don't think he is knowingly being misleading because he does state in the description that the animation comes from Dino Tonelli, who originally published a video claiming this event debunks the globe. So if we look at timeanddate.com, we can see that they have the day and night world map where you can see the sun and the moon's location for any date and time down to 10 minute intervals, as well as allowing you to see the day or night time for anywhere in the world. Like how Atlas VPN can allow you to seem like you're anywhere in the world day or night. It reroutes your data through one of its many secure servers around the world to help hide where you're viewing from. You can choose which country you want people to think you are in from the many options available. It also features both a tracker blocker and a breach scanner to offer even further protection online. Best of all is that with just a single account, you can install Atlas VPN on unlimited devices around the home whether it's phones, tablets, computers, or even TVs. Sign up today using my link below and you'll not only receive a whopping 85% off the regular price, but they'll also include an additional three months absolutely free and all with a full 30 day money back guarantee if you aren't completely satisfied. Now you will note on the map there are five color areas. The bright section where land masses appear white is the daylight section, the darkest section is nighttime, but then there are three bands in between them which gradually transition between daylight and night. This is the twilight zone. Not that twilight zone. There are three stages of twilight just after sunset and just before sunrise. Now, if you've ever waited around and watched the sunset, you'll know that after the sun disappears behind the horizon, it doesn't suddenly become nighttime. The sky remains brightly lit, and over the next hour or so, it gets progressively darker. This is twilight. It starts with civil twilight immediately after sunset, and lasts until the sun has dropped to around 6 degrees below the horizon, where it then transitions into nautical twilight. That lasts until the sun has dropped to around 12 degrees below the horizon, when we then move into astronomical twilight. And finally, once the sun has passed 18 degrees below the horizon, we move officially into nighttime. And we get the opposite in the morning, with the sky beginning to slowly brighten up in astronomical dawn, then followed by nautical dawn, and finally civil dawn, before we finally see the sun rise. And this happens because whilst we ourselves need to be on the half of the globe facing the sun in order to actually see the sun, the sunlight that is going into the outer edges of the atmosphere won't hit the Earth directly. It will instead pass overhead and hit the atmosphere on the other half of the Earth. Now, some of this light will just pass straight through the atmosphere and back out into space. Some of it, though, will reflect off the upper atmosphere and back down towards Earth. 
Now, this is only a very small amount, which is why it still seems quite dark, but it's not quite true darkness. So, technically means that people within those areas are still seeing sunlight, even though it's only a very small amount. In fact, during the summer months, above 50 degrees north latitude, which includes the UK, we never hit true nighttime. The bottom half of the UK gets to astronomical twilight, the upper half of the UK gets only nautical twilight, and then you have areas that barely get civil twilight, and some parts of the Earth in very northern latitudes that will never see the sun set. And this is what time and date themselves clarify in their own article about their statement of 99% of people seeing sunlight. Quote, It seemed like an impossible claim that circulated the internet last year, and yet our number crunches confirmed it. 99% of the world's population really do receive some degree of sunlight at 11.15 UTC on July 8th each year. Bracket, this is if you count the 3% that experience astronomical twilight, which is hardly discernible from nighttime. End quote. That means they're not just counting people in daylight, but also in twilight. And as they've specifically stated they're including astronomical twilight, which is the darkest stage, then that means all three stages of twilight are also included. So the 1% they're counting as not being able to see sunlight are only the people in true nighttime. And we can have a look at this by taking the map from time and date and bringing it into Photoshop and using its 3D mesh tool to transform the map into a sphere. We can then spin this around and confirm that the daylight fills up exactly half the globe as you'd expect, but then we have this gradual transition through twilight into nighttime. So for 99% of the population to see sunlight means that 1% is in full nighttime, which at that moment in time consists of most of Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Western New Guinea, Hawaii, and the various other Pacific islands, which total around 52 million people in population, roughly 1% of the global population. The misrepresentation with the animation that's being used in these videos and the subsequent challenge that Level Earth Observer is putting out to people is it suggesting that more than half the globe's surface needs to have direct line of sight to the sun, which is not the case with regards to the claim being made. The claim being made is only that people will see sunlight, not the sun directly. And once you account for the existence of atmosphere, that can reflect small amounts of light back down towards Earth on the shadow side, it's perfectly reasonable to see how people could see some light without actually seeing the sun, especially when time and date themselves state they are stretching the criteria to the absolute limits by including astronomical twilight, which they themselves state is, quote, hardly discernible from nighttime. When you consider the fact that twilight starts and ends with the sun up to 18 degrees below the horizon, this means that half the Earth is facing away from the sun, but 18 degrees of it is in twilight after sunset, and a further 18 degrees is in twilight before sunrise, which totals 36% in twilight, leaving far less than half the globe in full nighttime and 70% of Earth's surface is water, and over 30% of Earth's surface is the Pacific Ocean alone. So the claim that 99% of people can see sunlight at that moment is perfectly feasible once you factor in the inclusion of twilight. Now, I don't know if Dino knowingly left out twilight from his animations to try and validate his claims, or if it was merely an oversight on his part, but the animations don't include it. His is going from broad daylight covering more than half the globe straight to full nighttime, which obviously is impossible on a globe, but that's irrelevant because that's not what the claim is that's being made. Anyway, that's going to draw this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.